Wayne, you you look like you're on fire. <laughs> I'm going to strip down in a minute. Burn, baby, burn. Got snags on a barbie, and we're going to talk about new versus old four-wheel drives. So we're just going to talk about our concerns from our experiences. You can then draw your own conclusion to should you buy a brand new four-wheel drive or should you buy an old four-wheel drive? So old, what we're going to say is old, like early 2000s, 90s. 90s. Yeah, oh, 90s. I'm not thinking going that far back. I'm probably thinking before IFS. Before IFS, I wouldn't say before IFS. I'd say about 2000. 2000 and back. 2000 and back. Yeah. yeah that's, that, that's what I would say. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot less of the stuff we're going to talk about. So the first issue I'm going to talk about is someone like Land Rover, why would you bring out a vehicle that you got world awards for being full wheel drive and la di da? They have that and then they bring out the Discovery 4, which has 19 inch rims. It is just stupid. Mm. It's not silly, it is stupid. Why? Why would you do that? Look, they're all competing against each other trying to get the most sales. I guess the fact is that they that, know. That's they, my opinion. They anyway. know that one percent of people that own Land Rover Discovery Four is going to take them off road. Yeah, that's probably that's why. True. So remember that tag along we did. So we had a Discovery. Ooh. You know about this story. So it's 19-inch rims. It had uh, all-terrain tyres on them. Now the, the tyres weren't very good either, and the tyre manufacturer was was even worse. Their opinion about the whole matter afterwards. But what happened was, the tyre was like. Two inches? Yeah, bugger. It was like a rubber band. It was like a low profile tyre. That's yeah. not off road tyre. No. So, of course, you had to lower his tyre because we were doing off road stuff and, you know, there's, there's risk of, you know, rocks puncturing the tyres. So you, you deflate your tyre so it deforms over things. And lo and behold, it, uh, it, the tyre pinched the bead split on one it. of them, split the bead. That's yeah. after we plugged it already. It just couldn't handle it. Yeah. So, and it wasn't serious stuff we were doing either. No, so. it wasn't serious stuff, but he did need to have it aired down. Otherwise, he'd oh. be on 40 PSI. He was down a lot, what, 30 PSI? <laughs> Which was 30 still pretty high. PSI. <laughs> yeah. yeah, still pretty high, yeah. It's still pretty high. And, and the tyre shop said that the tyre manufacturer, Pirelli, said that um, uh, 35 PSI was the lowest that tyre should be going down to. But it doesn't say anywhere. No. But that's what, it, And they call it an off-road tyre. I call bull on that. That is just a cop out. Yeah. What are the problems here? The rim's too big. It's, hard, it's difficult for tyre manufacturers to make a tyre that's going to be able to handle um, deflation. Yeah. Number one. Number two, you've got a rubber band, so you can't deflate much anyway, and there's a chance of pinching the tyre, yep. et cetera. Very easily. And you're never going to get as much traction as a smaller rim with more rubber. Yep. Which and they don't have the option, as far as I'm aware, to go much smaller because of the brake calipers. They're yeah, yeah, because these big brake calipers, because they're yeah. heavy cars. And you can't go too much bigger tyre, because then you need to get a bigger suspension and change yeah. the guards and yeah. And then... Which I don't think you can do either. You can't no. do a suspension upgrade on them because of the. the, the there's, there's too much going on with these cars. That I think that you can actually lift them, like normally stock. You you, you can lift them. By push of a button. It oh, the so like down. airbags. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. so that was hydraulic. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know too much about it, but all I'm going to say is that car, the Discovery 4, is not an off roader. A Santa Fe would do better than that. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm probably going to cop something for that, but seriously, if they just change the wheels on them, it's capable. Oh, yeah. Like the old, like the olden day. Capstone? No way. It's the capstone and got it. Could you imagine yeah. that on that Israelite Bay trip? <laughs> and there's yeah. a video actually, Australia, 4x4 Australia, I think, on YouTube. They all had issues with their, um, with their um, discoveries because yeah. of the 19-inch rims. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Another one would be the, the sensors, I guess. All the sensors uh, on cars. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> sensors. Sensors on sensors. I oh, hear yeah, the sensors um, sensing the sensors. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. chain reaction problems. It's great safety. 
off-road, there should be a switch. Yeah. Flick the switch. Like an override. Hit four-wheel drive, overrides it all. Overrides all the sensors. All the, well, all the necessary sensors. Yeah. Not all of them, because some of them you still need, but. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, all these new ones have got the hill descents and the flipping yeah. U-turn stuff. and. Well, let's get one thing mm. straight. You don't need ABS off-road. ABS? On-road, yes. Off-road? No. In they... sand? In mud? It's dangerous. It is. And it destroys the track. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. But on a muddy hill, ABS kicks in. Wow. <laughs> Holy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't like to be behind the wheel. The steep. Yeah. Buddy, um, steep yeah. hill, you'll be... You the brake on, and all of a sudden it just, it just <laughs> it lets you go, and then it stops, and it lets you go, lets it and, and it, you got no control. Ooh, tucker moment. Yeah, yeah, and that was the last time I used ABS off-road. Once you flick that diff locker on in, in the 70 anyway, it switches the ABS off. The Jeep does the same. So sensors for sensors. Hey, you know something about sensors. How about that Prado? The 150 Prado on that tagline. Yeah, on a tagline, yeah, it's ABS line. Must have got cut or damaged or something. Had, or had, had dirt, or, yeah, or something yeah. like that. And, and he thought he had just, he went back into four high. And then, from four low? Yeah, from four low, yeah. And then couldn't get back into four low. And uh, we were on the beach, so you need low range. And yeah, it's just a bit of a, bit of a worry. Mm. He was more worried about cooking his car or stuffing the gearbox up, because it's going to get hot. Or about transmission getting too hot. You know, so... Um, labor. I was just lucky that you know we didn't do too much crazy stuff, but it's lucky he was away from it from a different trip, remember? Yeah. Because he got dirty, he cleaned it and they sorted it out, and that's when he realised that if he went back to two wheel drive, he couldn't go to four wheel drive. Yeah. So that's an issue. If you're there if you're is. somewhere and, and you're trying all these things to try and fix your sensor, you could very well go to two wheel drive just to see what it does, and then boom, you can't go back to four wheel drive. Yeah. And you're buggered. Yeah. There's a the same thing like with well, our tag longs or any trip. If a light comes on, people do freak out and they go, I, yeah. I need to fix that because, and so. you know, <laughs> I know it's going to not, tell me it's not going to work. So that's when we solder stuff, like, um, was it, which car do we do that soldering on? Because the, the light was on as well. Mm. Oh, um, what was that for? That was traction control, wasn't it? Something. Yeah, yeah. And we had to solder it because there was all sorts of things happening. Yeah, limp mode yeah. and all stuff. Yeah. Mm. So. A positive part about sensors, we know that too well. We just done a three and a half thousand kilometer drive. Oh yeah. And your fuel sensor came on and it was frustrating us to start oh. with because we changed the filters, nothing wrong. But then it came on again and then we checked the, second the water separation bowl and it had a fair amount of water in it. I'd say about 90 mil of water. There was a lot in there. There was a lot of water mm. and we drained it all out but the water had made it through the system and the light kept coming up, kept coming up, and you, you kept resetting it's, it. It's currently still on. Yeah, probably because of sensor stuff now. Yeah. From, from the water ingest. That was a good thing because it made us check it. That's right. Because had you done corrugation road with, that's going to mix that water oh. around a bit, and then who knows? What would have happened? Something could have gone yep. bang. Because the water doesn't compress. That's right. As well as diesel. <laughs> Might put a big hole through the motor. Yeah, yeah. Hole in the side of the block. Mm. Well, we pointed out a lot of negative stuff about new vehicles. And a bit of positive stuff too, but now let's go to old vehicles. I can already see a problem with old vehicles. They're, They're old. old. The obvious. <laughs> getting... Yeah. The obvious. And the older it is, the older it is. <laughs> is it the getting parts or is it the... Uh, well, it's it's, or is it the driving it's because it's old. It's an older vehicle. It's less reliable because everything's been used, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's had some wear. Uh, if it's a vehicle that you you have bought and you don't know the previous owners, you don't know the history of the vehicle, you don't know what could be worn, mm -hmm. and you can't just replace everything because that's going to cost you a fortune. Mm -hmm. There's a reason yeah. why you bought an old vehicle, right? That's right. Either you really liked it, mm -hmm. or two, that's what you could afford, and that's what. Mm. Your fault yep. was best. So I do, I do like the older vehicles though. When you pop that bonnet and you go, where is everything? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like this block there. They're a lot simpler. <laughs> yeah. If you know basic mechanics and how things yeah, work, they're, you, they're you pretty can cool. Probably fix it and get home. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So 
older vehicles, yeah, in, in that sense. I mean, they're more likely for something to go wrong, but you're more likely to be able to fix it. Yeah, and the older vehicles aren't so sensitive. Where's it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not so sensitive. Whereas the new ones are a bit more, you know, be yes. careful what you do to them. Yes, new <laughs> age cars, eh? Hey? Yep. They're all precious. So, an old car's like an ant. If it loses a couple of legs, it's, it can still get you home. Whereas if a butterfly, someone touches its wing, it's kind of stuffed. Yeah. It can't fly. Mm. Yeah. That's a good turn. That, that, <laughs> that was on the spot. Got butterflies, eh? <laughs> <laughs> old cars. <laughs> old cars. You know what? This is a little, little bit off the side of a good and a bad, but I reckon the older cars look tougher. That's probably because they, look they don't look like bubbles. Yeah, true. I think that's why I kind of went for that car, because it's new, but it's old. Yeah, nothing's um, changed. There's no push looks. buttons. Um, I, I, I remember when these first come out, the old school guys were like, oh, the dash has gone soft. It's all leather and plastic now. It's like, dude, it, everything's still like levers and <laughs> dials. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like, a, oh, I want four wheel drive. Click, click. It's <laughs> like, I want four wheel drive. Clunk. <laughs> With the air con on, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> push yeah, that over the there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then you've got to turn the dial. And the brand new one of these. When you flick it across, that vent will still get stuck one before the one you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So that, that's a new old. Yeah. That's an old new. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Are we sitting in the fence then, would you say? Yeah. I would say we're sitting I'm in the fence. fence I'm a fence sitter. Yeah. 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 I like both. There, it's just bits of both. Look, there's some new cars that look really nice, but uh, old cars. So I oh, know you had something to say earlier. Something about a one, 100 series versus 200 series or something? Oh, no, I had this guy come and see me and he was just like, oh, I mean, your cars have done so many Ks and I would never do that in my car. And I'm like, well, what, what car have you got? And he goes, oh, I've got 100. And then I got thinking about it and I was like, well, if your car was brand new, like if you had a brand new 100 series and a brand new 200 series, like which one would you take? So are you saying that someone in Japan just kept one of those and didn't drive it and then yeah, shipped it? Yeah, at the box. At the box. At the box. Okay. 100. <laughs> yeah, because you can't do that anymore. So yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. 100 as well. Yeah. And I, no, I, I like the 100s better. I think they're a bit more lo reliable. Yeah, because the 100s are still, they're still like a bush mechanic yeah. sort of car you if it did break fix. down. But the yeah. 200, uh, I don't know. You're talking about the 4.2. 4.7. Are you talking about a petrol? Yeah. You're talking about oh, okay. I'm just talking about hundreds. Hundreds, of hundreds it's just in general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I guess there's the yeah. 105 as well, but that's the newer. Uh, yeah, no, we'll go, we'll go 100. I have driven a 200. They are quite <coughs> nice. Yeah. But hundreds, I really like hundreds. But I would probably pick the 200. Yeah? Yeah. I'll probably pick 200. I've changed my mind. I okay. may be a bit biased because we've so, got 100. Let's say we're doing a trip that's going to involve desert, but then we're going to go head up Harvey or somewhere with big rocks clunking. And hey, is on. it a 105 now? No, it's a 100. It's still a 100. <laughs> <laughs> a 100 and a, and a 200. Okay, another 200 has got all the electrics and all the traction controls and everything going on. You know what? Um, but the, the 100s are... The, the crawler system on a 200 is absolutely amazing. I'm going to go 200. Yeah, I'm going to pick a new Ooh. car. Yeah, over, okay. over that, yeah, over a, a new hundred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, I'm gonna okay. go to two hundred. Yeah, well, it's gonna cost me a lot more when I dent something, <laughs> but I'm gonna go to two hundred. Well, no, actually, it won't. Why? Because to get new parts for a hundred series now is gonna cost you more than a two hundred <laughs> series. Everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're everywhere, and it's kind of a hypothetical question. But if you could get a new hundred, everyone knows all the ins and outs with that car already. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's documented. There's so much history on it. Yeah. The 200 things are still being found out. Oh yeah. You know, there's there's probably a lot of mechanics around town that don't know that if the brake fuse, brake light fuse, is gone, you can't start the car. And this happens with people 
That's actually another negative thing to bring up about new cars. Okay, so pathetic you, things like that. Wow. Yeah, so if you if you jack I didn't off, know there was a fuse on that. If you <laughs> if you jack off your trailer or, or pull a cable and then you short out your brake light from your trailer, it'll then blow the fuse for your um, you know, for your 200. Now, the same thing happens to the 70 actually. If the brake light fuse is gone, you can't start the car. So some people will be like, shit, I can't start my car. But you just put enough fuse in and then you can start it. It won't allow you to start your car. Hmm. And that's on the 70 too? That's on the 70. We'll try it afterwards. We'll wow. pull the fuse out and try and start your car. Hmm. On the brake light. Jesus. Oh, hmm. So, there so you go. same question again. 100. <laughs> Oh, the 200. <laughs> I'm 100. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's another one. A Jeep Rubicon with the um, sway bar disconnect, if that fails, it will send the car into limp mode. So I've heard, I need this clarified. If you own a Rubicon and your sway bar disconnect has malfunctioned, there's got to be a lot of people with that. Um, yeah. With the car, Co that is. Comment down below, yeah. Look, Jeeps, Jeeps are absolutely incredible and awesome and probably unbeatable on technical. rocky technical stuff. Yeah. But everywhere else, I don't think they stack up against mm. some other cars. Yeah. But they'll do better than a lot. Oh, definitely. Jeeps are pretty damn good. Definitely. What's the biggest negative part about an old vehicle? Probably it's that used, it's old. it's old, it's worn. Mm. Parts are going to be easy to get. Let's talk about parts. Parts for newer cars. A lot of things are in kits, right? Yeah, they're not getting down to like the five part bearing kit, you know, anymore. I think it's all like Preston now and it's all one solid unit, mm. you know, eventually. So if there's one little component that's stuffed up, like say, say you have a collapsed inner or outer bearing, yeah. you need to get out of the and get home. Mm. You can pull it off, replace that one bearing, mm. chuck it on or the seal or whatever and then get home. Yeah, it's the same but, as like your, your pulleys. Like um, I went to do an idler pulley and you can't just replace just the pulley, you gotta replace the whole housing as well that mounts to the... Oh really? Yeah, so it's just, you know. Money making. But it's money making, but it's also quick, I think. Mm. It's just the whole, it's probably this whole labor thing. Yeah. Just, yeah, okay, so it's more efficient to... Yeah, you because know, we're the older stuff, maybe you had to, Keep putting the press, knock it out, you know, all your bearings have pressed them and now it's all... So here's another thing, on all, all vehicles, if your alternator fails, like I'm talking really old now, where all you need to do is start your car off the battery and even if your battery is stuffed, you can keep going. But with a new car, if your battery is stuffed, it's, it may not keep going, depends on how stuffed the battery is. Two, the alternator keeps needs to keep going. If the alternator doesn't keep going, it can't send power to the computer. If the computer doesn't get power, the, the computer yeah. just goes when it, it gets about, when it gets to about 10 volts, as we found <laughs> out. Starts blowing smoke and doing all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need to do a battery swap here. Yes, yeah, switch her <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. And what about Jason off road living? His alternator failed because he had a factory alternator and we had to wire up, well, he had to wire up all these solar panels. Yeah, so he was driving, all, he was driving to the bush all these solar panels in the, mm. in the car. It was a... I was saying Trippy lost his roof rack too. <laughs> 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 it's all right, he has a truck now. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> now he's he good makes Jason. his own tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, that was pretty cool though. He ran on solar. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that was, was um, pretty yeah. impressive. And he was the right man for that. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, he was the right person for that to happen to. Yeah, yeah. There are things you can do, but the more advanced vehicles get, the less you're going to be able to do it. I mean, you need an engineering degree to figure out what the hell's going on with the electrics on your car these days. Whereas before, it's like, oh, well, it was, you can see this wire shorted out. Let's just pull this wire off this so we don't need it and yeah, yeah. you can get home, right? Yeah, oh, if yeah. it won't start, but you get some spray yeah. <laughs> yeah, off she goes. <laughs> yeah, give, yeah. give the old uh, starter motor a whack with your hammer. <laughs> Whoop, yeah. off she goes. Yeah. What about um, immobilizers? They're also a bit hit and miss. If, you feel, if your immobilizer fails and it's part of the computer system. You ain't going nowhere. You're going nowhere. Yep. Like, literally nowhere. That's what happened to the old boys Jeep. Yeah. And then we ragdolled them for about 200 k's off road, like proper off road stuff. And, and then the next day it started and he was pretty happy with that because he lost the headlight and the windscreen from all the stuff I was kicking back at him. 
at one stage that snatch trap went over his roof rack and then went back out again because he had to go through that mud hole. Yeah, yeah. And like <laughs> it's like it's not cowboy stuff. Is what we had to do. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. <laughs> like it's it's a good story. Yeah. Like that's that we could we could talk about that for a whole talking four by four. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, Not good for the Jeep, but it was, it was good for us. I think we should. That was, that was so good. And we actually have some footage for that. So let's just put a clip uh, here with a snatch trap. You know, and just, yeah, yeah, it's just going yeah, yeah. Right, And, so, and then I was driving in front of you two, telling you what's coming up. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's that was right. Pretty, pretty cool, too. Yeah. And then he stopped on every dodgy corner and you wanted to watch us. <laughs> oh, man, that was good fun. I guess we should come to a conclusion here. Um, before that, okay, I'm going to ask you, if you're going to buy an old four-wheel drive, what would you buy? I got a 2.8 Hilux. Oh. They just keep going. I'm going to have to join Wayne there. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I was going like to pick... The, the non-turbo, like even just the 2.8. Yeah, I was yeah. going to pick the 2.8. I was going to go... Okay. You don't have to change your mind. If that's what you buy... No, 80 you're about, series. I'm going to go an 80. Yeah. Like a 1HZ like, motor, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm just going to go an 80. Just make sure you check the owner <laughs> ownership of it, that it wasn't owned by a guy called Harry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not owned by Harry, then, you, then you're sweet as. New car. Brand new. Oh, this is going to give away what it's going to do, but but hang on, this doesn't matter in this one, does it? I'm going to say Cruiser. I just, I love the Cruiser. Yeah? What, a 70? Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, I love that car. <laughs> you? Oh. Look, if you took, if 70s was off the cards. Okay, 70s off the cards. Okay, while he's thinking 70 is still on the card, you, you go 70? Hang on. If What's it the was budget? on the cards, What's yeah, the budget? I'd go with 70. Okay. What's the budget? Any budget? Look, if people, if people, <laughs> yeah. talk, if people talk 200 series, with it, okay, let's allow up to a Sahara 200. Because oh, that allows for what I want. Okay, I was going to say Unimog. The new new, new Unimog. New, uh, that's, that's getting up there. Yeah, that's about 400 grand. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that, that's a dream car. Yeah, right. yeah. No. Go on. I'd have to say the new Merc. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. The G-Wagon? G-Wagon. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like nice. a high spec 70. The wagon or the, the ute version? The ute. Okay, the ute version. Oh yeah. I'll go, I'll go Ram. A 150 or a 250, no, the 250 Ram, the diesel. That's even with the 70 as an option, I'm gonna go Ram. Okay. Wow. Okay, if the 70 was an option, I'd probably go, the stuff that we do, I think a Hilux. And I'll show you what a Ram can do. Because they are amazing. I've seen what they can do. On the beach? <laughs> that would be interesting. I have seen a Ram on the beach. Yeah? Oh, they're good Quite on the impressive. beach. Quite impressive. Oh, on the beach are good, but I don't think the tight bush bashing we do. Oh, no. She might, and she's not going to fit. She's making her own tracks the whole way. Well, well, we'll, send him, we'll, we'll, like, we'll send him first. Like, we'll, we'll be like... like I mean, hey. turning circle is that. <laughs> Yeah, that turning circle, yeah. No, actually, it's got a better turning circle than the 70. There you go, done. Sold. Done. It's so wide, I like it. But you can't see it. I'll be, I'll be scared to drive it at the supermarket, though. Remember oh, who drove one to Walmart? These. It's like, oh, man. I can't, dude, can you stick your head out the window? I can't see where the bollard is. It's like, oh, you're two metres away from it. <laughs> I can't see it. That car was so high. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. It, was it had electric steps. Yeah, yeah electric I, steps. Yeah. So when you open the door, it goes... Roo, roo, roo. <laughs> and good I'd really, life. I'd really love to <laughs> test drive. Don't just, I want to test drive the supercharged um, Ford, the is it the Raptor. Ford Raptor. This is the, the Raptor. Oh, the one fifty Raptor. The, the supercharged one. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to drive it. I just want to test drive it. Would you drive the Rivian? Yeah. yeah what's, what's on there? It's the, it's the electric four drive. It's the future. Is it? The future. It's out there. Okay, I seen, is that the yeah, one that was in your yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I haven't seen a person, so I can't say. I would definitely drive that. I will give it a go first. I need the test driver first. <laughs> but each wheel has a motor. Holy so if you drop a motor out, it's like, it's like a 747 Boeing. You drop a motor, you still got another three. Wow. You just keep going. That's pretty cool. And it's instant. Can you imagine a traction control on that thing? 
going up rocks. You'd be like, yeah, wheel but two again, and three are reclined. But again, how many wires and stuff is going to these? Well, not, not that much. And, and it's underneath, just one. there's no diffs and there's no nothing. There's no drive shafts. Everything underneath is just flat. It's a flat plate, so there's, there's, you've got way more clearance. And it doesn't matter if you hit anything because you're not going to break a diff. Yeah. Punch a hole in the diff. It's just a hmm. solid steel plate. It's like a heavy skateboard. I'll have to see one of these. Yeah. I think we're done here. So conclusion. What is better? It's kind well, of... This is where we could bring up that... This is bring up another topic. Yeah. Any, anyone new to four driving? I'd say go to older. Oh, well that... Okay, well that's a whole new topic. Yeah, anyone yeah. new to four driving? Yeah, yeah, I would say go older. Yeah, yeah. But where did I go? That's in another video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon. But what if you're into four, you're new to four driving and you got a new car? Those are the things you need to be aware of that we discussed. Mm. Don't don't be discouraged. Don't yeah. be discouraged. And if you have an old vehicle, don't be discouraged either. Just go with other people. And the same with the newer car. Go with other people. Maybe yeah. go with other people have the same car. Yeah. Well, with uh, like a four drive training we do, we're getting all new cars coming up, stock standard, and they are blowing us away like this. What they can do. Yeah. So it's. Yep. Yeah. Wow. It's a, Pretty it's amazing the, the technology it's they have in the vehicles or yeah. what they can do. Mm. All right. Cool. I think that's uh <laughs> stirred up some <laughs> I don't think discussions, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Mm. Yeah. We forgot to do cool items. We'll, we'll do that back. in another one. We'll be back in another episode of Talking Four by Four. That was fun. Mm. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, Wagyu. let's, let's get the Wagyu. snaps out and some sausages. <laughs> uh -huh. Beef sausages in the barbecue. No, not beef. Wagyu. Wagyu. Steak wagyu. Wayne talk. Yes.